Julia's father saves the Republic. At 15 years old, Julia must have been more proud of her father than ever. Marcus Julius Cicero who was the best lawyer in Rome, definitely the best speaker, and his daughter Hero. This year, 63 BC, Cicero had finally achieved his dream. He was elected a consul of the Roman Republic, one of its leading men. His election was a huge event for the whole family, including Julia. Her father had moved up in the world, from a small town landowner to a big name in the biggest city in the world. Julia and her father were close. She was the apple of her father's eye. Cicero wrote about her to a friend. How affectionate, how modest, how clever. The express image of my face, my speech, my very soul. A time when daughters were much less valued than sons, Cicero showed his daughter with affection. Like other Roman women, Julia would not participate in politics herself. She could not even attend meetings of the Senate. But Julia had a bird's eye view of the most exciting events in Rome's political world. Cicero was a master of Roman politics and must have passed his ideas on to his daughter. Julia knew that Cicero was a strong supporter of Rome's political traditions. She also was familiar with Cicero's friends. Romans who struggled to save the Republic in its dying days. They came for dinner and chat with Cicero Clever's daughter. So many Roman women carried out their role in politics by influencing the men around them. Julia's mother, Terentia, may have been one of these. An account of the day note that she took more interest in her husband's political career than she allowed him to take in household affairs. Outside of politics, Julia had more freedom. With an escort, she could visit her friends, catch her favorite show at the theater, shop in the forum, or go to a temple for an important religious ritual. The year of Cicero's consulship was an exciting one for Julia's family. Cicero's new office brought power, but also danger. One of the men Cicero had defeated in the election, Catilina, wouldn't bear at the loss. He plot to kill Cicero, overthrow the Republic and burn down Rome. He even raised his own army to attack the city. Cicero denounced his enemy in four magnificent speeches to the Senate. Catalina was forced to flee Rome. He fought an army sent out by Cicero and was killed. After consulting with the Senate, Cicero executed Catalina's supporters without a trial. Cicero had saved the day. He was a national hero, at least for now. Crowds cheered him in the streets, but his glory quickly faded. His enemies turned the people against him. They were angry because Cicero executed Catalina's followers without a trial. Cicero lost the favor of the Roman people. His enemies forced him into lonely exile in Greece. An angry mob burned down his house. While Cicero was abroad, Julia and her mother walked back clothes if they were in mourning in exile, Cicero worried about his family. But the family's fortune suddenly changed once more. Soon enough, Cicero was on his way back to Rome. His powerful friends had called back from exile. Cicero lived to fight another day, but the sweetest part of his triumph may have been seeing his devoted daughter. Without enough money to travel comfortably for a proper escort, Julia made the long journey from Rome to southern Italy to greet her father when he returned to his country.